Okay. Um, so, uh, in implantation, basically the recipient operation, uh, as you all are aware, uh, of, of gastroenterologists and hepatologists who may not be, involves a recipient hepatectomy. So you explant the native liver, then you do implantation of the new liver. And uh, implantation of the new liver basically has three stages. One is you prepare uh, the recipient bed for implantation. So you prepare a good inflow of the artery and the vein, a good hepatic venous outflow, and you take uh, the bile duct with all the periductal tissue in the recipient and have it ready for um, receiving biliary drainage from the donor graft. And then there is a bench preparation involved. So you prepare the recipient bed, then you prepare the liver on the back table or the bench procedure to make sure that the uh, job during implantation in anastomosis is simple. And that is all ascertained by doing a good, perfect bench work. And then you actually do the anastomosis. So I will talk a little bit about how you prepare the inflow, the outflow, and the bile duct in the, in the recipient. And then I'll show you some videos on bench preparation and actual reconstruction of the inflow out of the bile duct. Uh, preparing the portal vein in the recipient, the problems, usually uh, the problems that you face are to do with portal vein thrombosis. So you, there are various ways of getting rid of that thrombus. So sometimes if it's well intimized and the thrombus is sub intimal, you don't actually have to do anything to it as long as the flow is good and the, the lumen is patent. But sometimes you cannot use the recipient portal vein as such. And in those situations, you may have to have an extension from the SMV. So this is through the uh, base of the amentum on top of the duodenum. This is a graft, which I think you can see from the SMV that leads onto the uh, portal vein. So that's what you have to get ready before you put the liver in. And in terms of hepatic artery, uh, sometimes the recipient artery is not healthy. There is intimal dissection. It may be short, it may be small caliber or inadequate flow. So you have to prepare the arterial inflow and you can get inflow from any of the arteries in that region with or without a conduit. And some, this is one example of where you may be needed uh, uh, extension of the common hepatic artery with a saphenous vein uh, conduit uh, because it was short and the artery uh, distal to the CHA had dissected. So we went back to the CHA just beyond the origin from the celiac and had to extend it to the saphenous vein conduit. All this is prepared before the donor liver is implanted. Now, preparation of the outflow, it depends on the preoperative assessment of the hepatic venous anatomy. Uh, these are two examples, one where there is good alternative segment four flow, uh, that's this and this vein, they're all entering, they're both entering into the left hepatic vein of the junction of the left and the middle. So if in this case, you took the middle vein with the right flow graft, it would be okay. But in the picture on the right, um, maybe I should show the cursor. In the picture on the right, uh, the middle vein actually drains both the segment four as well as segment five and eight. And here we would prefer to do a modified right flow graft. That means leave the middle hepatic vein with the donor because the donor doesn't seem to be having a good drainage uh, except into the MHV. Um, so generally, we would try and do uh, uh, middle hepatic vein retrieval along the right lobe in cases where there is enough functional remnant and if there is good segment four drainage into the left hepatic vein or the distal middle hepatic vein, but we would resort to either a partial middle vein or a conventional modified right lobe graft if these are not true. So these are examples of uh, how we may reconstruct um, middle hepatic venous outflow on the bench, make it into one anastomosis and then extend it with a conduit, or you actually do a Y graft and then you have a single uh, outflow which is to be anastomosed to the cava. This we published two, three years ago. Uh, in terms of bile duct, what we do is in the recipient, we, as you can see, we loop everything uh, bile duct with a lot of periductal tissue, and this is how you prepare the recipient duct. And this is uh, what you have in the donor liver, uh, two hepatic ducts in this case, but nicely uh, enveloped by the hyalur plate Clisonian sheath. Uh, this is an approach we've been using for a few years and have published it as well. Uh, so this is how you preserve the ducts on the donor side. Uh, and now I'll show you some videos about uh, 
how you do the bench work and the implantation. So stepwise, we routinely, if unless there is um, uh, hepatocellular cancer which is near the portal vein or if there is portal vein thrombosis, in all other cases we would retrieve the portal vein from the explant and use it as a conduit for either the same case or cryopreserve it for use later. And this again we published earlier. So this just shows um, the retrieval of portal vein venous conduit from the explant. See what I want to show. The artery forceps are actually holding up the uh, portal vein graft and that is retrieved. 